This video shows how to create a steel striker for flint and steel. For more information on blacksmithing, please see artistblacksmith.com. The background noise from the gas forge interferes with what I'm talking with with the striker, so I've decided to narrate over top of the video, and this will give you a clear explanation of what's going on. The steel, in this case, is a C-shaped piece of steel when struck on a piece of flint throws sparks. Now this is a hardened piece of high carbon steel and this was used to create kitchen fires and lighting a pipe or any household campfire or anything like that in the 1800s and previously. So I'm using a rat tail file and I'm forging it out to a flat bar with a point on the end. The flat bar thickness is about one eighth of an inch thick and it's about three eighths of an inch wide. And then the point is quite a sharp tapering point. I'm working this over the horn so it draws out as fast as possible. To keep the length of the video down I've had to omit several heats throughout the sequence. created my point and now I'm making a curl on the end working over the far edge of the anvil back towards myself small delicate curl you want to work the tool steel up at a bright yellow down to a medium orange once it gets below the orange temperature you should go back into the heat I'm quenching the curl in a tin cup of water and then I'm working it down over the horn to create a J shape The actual striker I'm making is a J-shaped one, not a C-shaped one. Flattening it out, just evening it up a little bit, creating a size that would be comfortable in the hand and the shape as well. The actual curled portion is what you hang on to flat piece at the front is the striking surface. We'll cut this off using a cutoff hardy. The cutoff hardy is a wedge shaped tool and you hammer down on the bar on top and it cuts through the hot steel. You never want to cut all the way through, only part way and then break it the rest of the way. So that's the fundamental shape of the striker. Now I will heat treat it and this is done in two stages. The first one is hardening it. Now, unfortunately what I'm doing is right at the top of the video frame here. I'm testing the steel with a long magnet to see when it first starts to bring the magnetism back in, first starts to pull. When you heat the steel up to a medium orange it, it loses its magnetism and then as soon as the magnetism comes back that's when you quench it in the bucket and you quench the whole thing all at once into the slack tub. And that's quenched right now. You swish it around, make sure it's stone cold when you take it out. Next I've ground the surface, one face of it, and I'm going to temper it and I'm doing this the old way. I've heated up a bar in the forge and I place it on the bar and I'm looking for a color of straw yellow to come up on the the ground surface. I have to take a close look. It's hard to tell with the light from the bar. Now 
this tempering reduces some of the stress in the striking surface of the steel. And quench again as soon as your color comes up. If you wait too long on a thin piece of metal you can temper too far into the reds or the blues. Now the back portion where I'm not pointing to it can be softer back in here and so I'll temper that on the bar as well and I'll take it up to a dark straw or you can even go to a blue. The reason we temper it is in case it's ever dropped it's less likely to fracture. The bar is a lot cooler now so it takes longer to heat up. And once I get to the reds or the blues I'll quench it again and again that's locking the color in. If I just left it in the air it could go darker. So that portion's the curled portion is softer and the front portion is still hard. Or harder. Now I'll test it. It's a piece of flint and the striker that I just made. And that throws good sparks. And that's what we're looking for is that it'll throw a lot of good long reaching sparks. Now, in the final test, we'll try and light a little fire with it. There's the striker. And I'm using another piece of flint, and this is thinner and it has quite a sharp edge on it and you want a sharp edge because you're actually shaving off part of the metal and that's what makes the spark. And this is a tinder can with charred cloth in it. It's a cotton that's been uh, warmed up beside a campfire and the material inside chars and there's a lid that goes on top. And the idea is to strike a spark into the can and it will catch on the char cloth and then you blow it to flame and use your tinder. In this case I'm using newspaper but you could use birch bark or cedar bark. So I'm striking the sparks into the tinder. Well actually into the the char cloth. And there's the catch. It's a little amber that catches on the char. And I just slowly blow it to life. Add a little bit more fuel. Keep coaxing it. Keep blowing it, and then I'll get a bit of flame, and then I'll catch the paper. And once I get flame on the paper, then I go back to the the other tinder or paper and and take a full flame on it. It's just about there. There's the flame, and that would be used to start start your campfire or survival fire. Um, similar versions used for lighting a pipe or a household cooking fire back in the 1800s. There's lots of different types of strikers. This is just one, but they all have a tool steel edge in common. That's another type that I made a long time ago. simple little project um, using an old file. You can use a, a flat file or a round one, triangular. It's the tool steel that you're actually after. I've had good success using spring steel making strikers. Um, W1 works well. Lots of different tool steels. The main thing is it has to have a good carbon content.